And good day, my listeners. We're at chapter 5, verse 11 of the book of Nehemiah. Hopefully I won't sneeze all over the microphone. I must apologize for that. Restore, I pray you, to them, even this day, their lands, their vineyards, their olive yards, and their houses, also the hundredth part of the money, and of the corn, the wine, and the oil that you exact of them. Notes. Give them back the interest that you have illegally earned off of them. As well, give them back their lands and houses so they might make a living. And let them repay you as they can. Now, this is God's way right here, you know. He has plenty of patience with us. And we should uh, have plenty of patience with our brethren. Okay? All of this was meant to serve as a type of what the Lord has done for us. Forgiven us all of our things meaning that we should show leniency and mercy to others likewise. And yet there is no hint here in the text of the condoning of laziness. As Paul said, If you don't work, you shouldn't eat. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 10. Okay, Just a little brief covering, uh, just a little brief covering on my feelings on that. Actually, Paul's as well. Verse 12. Then said they, We will restore them, and we'll, we will require nothing of them. So will we do as you say. Then I called the priest, and took an oath of them, that they should do according to this promise. Notes. Um, the nobles, basically, they agreed to restore everything. Verse 13. Also I shook my lap, and said, so God shake out every man from his house and from his labor who performs not his promise, even thus be he shaken out and emptied. Notes. Well, to shake your lap, this is kind of an odd Jewish custom. I really don't quite understand. But in a sense, Nehemiah called a curse upon the nobles who would fail to obey this promise. Scripture and all the congregation said, Amen, and praised the Lord, and the people did according to this promise. Uh, n notes. Uh, point blank, they obeyed. Very, very wise uh, decision by these nobles and rich folks. Verse 14. Moreover, from the time that I was appointed to be their governor in the land of Judah from the twentieth year even unto the two and thirtieth year of Artaxerxes the king that is twelve years I and my brethren have not eaten the bread of the governor notes um, I'm going to have to kind of help you all with the translation here I and those who have served under me in the realm of government have not taxed you at all for our upkeep even though he was entitled to do so, okay? In other words, what he was asking the nobles to do, he had done and was doing so himself. He set a good example. Verse 15, But the former governors who had been before me with chargeable, were chargeable unto the people and had taken of them bread and wine beside forty shekels of silver. Yes, even their servants bore rule over the people, but so did not I because of the fear of God. Notes. Well, you have to pay a little bit of attention here because Nehemiah was not condemning these former governors. Only two are actually known, and that's Zerubbabel and Ezra, although there may have been others, and that's more than likely the case. He is merely stating what the Lord wanted him personally to do. Now, Jesus said himself, We must render to Caesar the things which are Caesar's, and to God that which belongs to God. That's in Mark chapter 12, verse 17. It's also found in the Gospel of Matthew. Uh, I'd have to think if they appear in the others. But, oh boy, problem here. Where were we? No, we're at verse 16. Got my little cord caught. Ye also, I continued in the work of this wall, neither brought we any land. And all my servants were gathered thither unto the work. Notes. I have donated my time and services to build up Israel, not to do otherwise. 
He wasn't looking to get any kind of personal gain or any personal gratification. He was strictly doing the instruction of God. Verse 17. Moreover, there were at my table an hundred and fifty of the Jews and rulers, beside those who came unto us from among the heathen who were about us. Notes. He sat down and he set a public table daily for over 150 people who were serving in government, and he did so by paying for it himself. Verse 18, Now that which was prepared for me daily was one ox and six choice sheep. Also fowls were prepared for me, and once in ten days store of all sorts of wine. Yet for all of this required not I the bread of the governor, because the bondage was heavy upon this people. Notes. As I stated several times, even though he had the power to tax the people to pay for all of this, he did nothing of the sort. Verse 19. Think upon me, my God, for good, according to all that I have done for this people. Notes. Well, you can rest assured that God definitely thinks upon us for good whenever we do such things. Nehemiah was a great example as to what a Christian believer should be like. Although I know for a fact he wasn't perfect, uh, he did quite a few things right there. Very, very unusual amount of giving on this man's part. Chapter 6 Now it came to pass when Sanballat and Tobiah and Geshem the Arabian and the rest of our enemies heard that I had built the wall and that there was no breach left therein though at that time I had not set up the door upon the gates that Sanballat and Geshem sent unto me saying come let us meet together in some one of our villages in the plain of Ono but they thought to do me mischief notes now, the Hebrew text bears it out that they were plotting to murder Nehemiah. Okay? They were not just merely uh, looking to do mischief. If you can find a copy of the original Hebrew text or you have a strong concordance, it should bear it out that they were definitely planning on putting the mafia whack job on this guy. What a shame. Verse 3. And I sent messengers unto them, saying, I am doing a great work, so that I cannot come down. Why should the work cease while I leave it and come down to you? Notes. Somehow, Nehemiah was informed of this snare of treachery. Maybe it was a word from a prophet. Maybe it was a word, or maybe uh, somehow it got to him. But what, whatever the case is, he definitely knew that something was not right. Could have been just mere spiritual discernment on his part. Verse 4. Yet they sent unto me four times after this sort, and I answered them after the same manner. Then sent Sanballat his servants unto me in like manner the fifth time with an open letter in his hand. Notes. In that culture, to have addressed an open letter to a state governor was uh, it was kind of an insult of some kind. Verse 6. Wherein was written, It is reported among the heathen, and Gashmu said it, that you and the Jews think to rebel, for which cause you build the wall, that you may be their king according to these words. Notes. Now, come on, give me a break. All of this was a lie. Verse, <laughs> verse 7. And you have also appointed prophets to preach of you at Jerusalem, saying, There is a king in Judah. And now shall it be reported to the king according to these words. Come now, therefore, and let us take counsel together. Notes. None of that happened. Okay, or else a prophecy was misinterpreted by this heathen. Okay, uh, just bottom line, it just simply was not right, no matter which way you cut it. Verse eight. 
Then I sent unto him, saying, There are no such things done as you say, but you feign them out of your own heart. Notes. That was, well, Nehemiah kind of threw a jab right back at him. And he's full of malarkey, is what he basically said. Verse 9. For they all made us afraid, saying, Their hands shall be weakened from the work, that it be not done. Now therefore, O God, strengthen my hands. Notes. Now, the original text actually says more along the lines, For they made us, or they sought to make us afraid, uh, but nope, that did not happen. The Lord strengthened their hands, and they continued just like I will. Verse 10. Afterward I came unto the house of Shemaiah, the son of Deliah, the son of Mehatabel, I guess that's how you say it, who was shut up. And he said, Let us meet together in the house of God within the temple, and let us shut the doors of the temple, for they will come to slay you. Yes, in the middle of the night they shall come to slay you. Notes. We have we have a divine uh, word, and it forbids Nehemiah, being a prince of the tribe of Judah and not a priest of the tribe of Levi, to enter into the temple. Thus was Shemaiah uh, shown to be a false prophet. His message contradicted the Bible, and every other professed prophet should be judged accordingly. Is uh, what being said in accordance with the Word of God? That is the question you have to ask whenever you confront any preacher of the gospel. Verse 11. And I said, Should such a man as I flee? And who is there that being as I am would go into the temple to save his life? I will not go in. Notes. I will not even go into the temple to save my life because I, not being a Levite, would be disobeying the word of God to do so. And on top of that, there is some scriptural evidence that whenever the priests and Levites went into the temple, they would oftentimes tie a rope around their leg so in case they screwed up really, really badly, someone could pull the dead body out, if you get what I'm saying, okay? Um... God took those things very, very personally. If you don't believe me, read those first five books of the Bible. He got right down to business on quite a few of them. As a matter of fact, Aaron's sons, Nadab and Abihu, were struck down uh, because they offered profane fire. But I won't get into that. I need to keep reading. Verse 12. And lo, I perceived that God had not sent him, but that he pronounced this prophecy against me. For Tobiah and Sanballat had hired him. Notes. This so-called believing Jew was a false prophet. Nehemiah evidently found this out a very short time later. Okay, But nevertheless, he found them out. And he did not listen. Verse 13. Therefore was he hired that I should be afraid and do so in sin and that they might have matter for an evil report, that they might reproach me. Notes. Well, unfortunately, even as we have seen, God's people joined with the world in attempting to destroy the man of God. And sadly, this is not the only time this has happened. It's happening all over the world right now. Verse 14, very quickly. My God, think thou upon Tobiah and Sanballat according to these their works, and on the prophetess Noadiah and the rest of the prophets that would have put me in fear. Notes. Evidently, quite a few of these prophets, along with this particular woman, had joined the world against Nehemiah. In fact, the far greater harm always comes from inside the church. I hate to say that, but you don't know persecution until you make some religious people mad. But let it always be understood, if dates and times are put on a prophecy and it does not come to pass, or else what is being said is not in accordance with the word of God, it should be known and understood that those who give forth such are false prophets. In these modern times, the world abounds with such false prophets, and the church seems to be... Uh, disinclined to call anyone to account. Very, very sad state of affairs. We will have to pick up 
in chapter 6, verse 15. Thank you, and God bless. See you later. Bye-bye.